this next video comes from a post I put up in my uh, in my group, and basically I was asking, uh, you know, what what bud line styles, basically that along those lines, that uh, kind of changed the game, you know, and uh, I'll probably call this video game changers. Uh, nothing is meant for legal purposes. Talking about the past, this is all history. And a lot of this goes back to my time and some of it before that and even after that when uh, they were continued with. But, uh, you know, there's there was a lot of good responses and a lot of different opinions, you know. But, uh, and some of them hit on kind of the stuff I'm going to talk about and I've talked about it in other chats and other videos. Uh, but I just kind of want to... Uh, um, not rehash, but, you know, kind of, uh, pinpoint some of the things that I believe happened with the breed, uh, that made a big difference, you know, uh, in the past you have, uh, Kobe dogs, Dybul dogs, you know, uh, Boudreaux dogs, you have, uh, different places where, uh, that really stood out, you know, whether it's, Texas or the uh, Great Lakes area or eastern United States, you know, the, with uh, the Carolinas and Virginia, you know, uh, you got Florida and, you know, <coughs> different bloodlines to the Bully Sun stuff, you know, and, and in most cases, you know, most dogmen like rough dogs, you know. They like the powerhouses, they like the hard mouth, they like the speed and strength and all that. I do too, you know. Most of them don't like dumb dogs, you know, who would. And uh, I basically uh, put a time frame or a time span, you know, from the late 70s moving forward, you know. And in my opinion, what a big game changer was... Uh, what you would call the Zeke Black Widow dogs or the Bolio dogs or the Tombstone Red Baby stuff, you know. And with Bolio, uh, some of the earliest ones I saw were from down from the Indian Sunny stuff. It was the Bolio, Corvino, Eli stuff like Rowdy, Aunt Jane, Bull, those type of dogs, you know, uh, champion Kramer stuff from up in Oregon because Bolio was up there. Also, and of course in Arizona, you know, all those Bolio dogs from Patrick and and then and then you have the Sorrels Bull stuff. Also in Arizona, you know, that Zeke Black Widow, you could call it Dibo Black Widow, Spike Black Widow, but with the Zeke involved. Uh, what you have is uh, a lot of people would call them head dogs, you know. And I want to stress that, that what most people think are head dogs or what they call head dogs or the ones they've seen are a little bit different from the ones I was familiar with. Uh, the head dogs that I was familiar with didn't just hold on. They weren't just defensive. They didn't just use it as a mechanism to stay out of trouble. They fought the head, or they fought the muzzle, or the bottom jaw, or in the mouth. They would take your teeth out. They'd put holes and break your jaw or break your muzzle, pushing forward rather than defensively going backwards. And they did have defense and were able to go backward. And a lot of them, once they had that advantage, uh, would go to the kidneys, you know, especially a lot of the Zeke Black Widow stuff. You go to the front leg, shoulder, chest, all that. But it was just a different style. And in my mind, it was a counter to all them rough dogs, all them rough Texas, you know, dogs, all them rough Florida dogs, all that Georgia, Louisiana, you know, Mississippi, in some parts of Miss some some dogs in Mississippi. And uh even dogs from up north, you know, the rough, hard-biting turtle buster dogs and the Zebo stuff and the uh, 
Hetrick blood, you know, Kobe Lightner and all this stuff. It was just something that started to come about and I think uh, made a big difference in the dogs. That counter to those styles, kind of like, you know, I mentioned it over and over again, kind of like Ali versus Frazier or Ali versus Foreman, you know. You have a smart game, busy, a lot of action, intense, you know, wild, screaming, uh, you know, kind of uh, good wrestlers and great air and things like that, you know, was a counter to them rough, hard biting shoulder chests and stifled dogs and brisket dogs like that. They were very effective, you know. Uh, in my time, you had you had some of the stuff coming down from Hammer. Uh, you know, I saw the stuff down from Pierce. You know, those were good dogs. And uh, Shaky, I saw him in a very game loss. That's kind of the Hammer stuff. You know, the Salisbury Blood Cat and Company and others had out here with uh, Sammy and Baby and Sads and Suds had Daisy and her sister and and. Uh, you know, along those lines. Not to mention all the ones coming out of Arizona, you know. You had several champions, several uh, grand champions, you know, that had some of that blood. They weren't always pure Bolio dogs, although some of them were, you know, whether it was coming down off a of Homer, it's even in the, it's even in the uh, uh, Frisco dogs, you know. Uh, Texas Express used them, even Bockery with the, with the, uh, that little dog, I forget his name right now, but you guys know which one I'm talking about, uh, Heavy Bolio dog, you know, we even had it on the chat, you know, what, what style, you know, Bockery always says, you know, head dog, good head dog will beat anything, you know, and the reason for that is they, they fight you where all the action is, you know, they take away your mouth, they'll break your teeth, you know, They'll control your head, puncture your head, break your muzzle, break your bottom jaw. You know, Red Danger was a two-time winner, uh, two times best in show. He was kind of that, you want to call it Bolio, Klaus, uh, white blood cross, you know. He was out of Baby Spike, which was Red Baby's brother, bred to Petrie's Ma, I think it was. She was one of the foundation bitches for the for the uh, white blood that, uh, you know, uh, Red Danger is a super dog, you know, he, he would control that bottom jaw, you know, and his fight went distance, they, both of them went over an hour, uh, the one out here went an hour 40, he beat a, uh, a litter mate to all those dogs out of Bobby Jr. and, uh, Dirty Mary, you know, and, of course, you have the Bobby Jr. stuff, you know, a lot of that with Hackman and, and uh, you know, Boyles and those different dogs, you know. That little Ronnie dog I had from Boyles, he was that same way. He would he would actually grab the tip of the nose, you know, and shake like that, work the head, muzzle, you know. Um, uh, and then hit all fours, you know. One leg, one front leg, the other front leg, one stifle, the other stifle, like that. Very talented dog. And with that bolio, uh, the crosses, you know, like I said, it's even in the Chinaman stuff. Uh, there's bolio carver. There's uh, uh, there's uh, bolio klaus, of course. The red baby stuff, you know, those started a lot of good dogs. You know, you have bull boy bob and bob and commander whitehead and. All those, even, uh, 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 you know, Grand Champion Hope has some of that in her, you know. And these are all dogs that were a little bit different as far as changing the styles up a little bit, you know. Not that they weren't rough, but they were smart, you know. And uh, so, again, you could call it Zeke Black Widow, you know. It's, it's the Daibo stuff mixed with the with the Zeke stuff, you know, kind of like that. Uh Zeke of course was a four time winner, you know. Uh and he's heavy, heavy bull is heavy Zeke, you know. Even in uh Mexico, that's where they have that actual breeding of, 
of uh, Zeke to Black Widow. And you see that in, uh, it's been mentioned lately, the Bayonne Club's Grand Champion Soga. You know, Mr. Gray said she would get you right below the eyes and just wreck your muzzle. When she was done, you could stick fingers in the holes that she left, you know. Grand Champion. Tough, tough dogs, you know. The Santander had the, they were known for having that Zeke blood, the Santander brothers in Mexico. People used to ask them, what, what blood is that? And they would say Klaus blood, you know, in their broken English. People thought they meant Burt Klaus. They didn't mean Burt Klaus. They meant Eddie Klaus, which was, uh, you know, who's behind Zeke, you know. Uh, Klaus is Zeke, K-L-A-U-S, Zeke, right? And so you have this, these dogs represented, uh, whether you want to call them Bolly or Zeke Blackwood or whatever, represented all first, you know, in California, Oregon, throughout the southwest, spreading out to different parts of the country, you know, as far as Virginia and, and uh, you know, even some in Florida and, and of course, going to Europe, you know, uh, Champion Snubby, Uptown Boys Champion Snubby, was bred to the boomerang stuff. Uh, Snubby was a litter mate to Tonka and uh, Crash and all them, Cremator. That stuff made its way to Europe, you know. And of course, you have that uh, Tombstone Red Baby. It's some more of that, you know, Daibo Black Widow stuff with the Klaus in it, you know. Those made a slew of dogs, you know, whether they were in Oklahoma, even up in Canada, you know, with Otter. And, uh, but just a lot of them, you know, I saw Tonka dog, Sons of Tonka, Descendants of Tonka, you know. A good example of that contrast would be uh, Broats Pirate. Pirate was out of uh, Rascal Jr. He was a brother to Broats Dottie. And the Sosa boys had had a 20-fight uh, uh, win streak. 18 wins and 2 draws. Pirate broke their win streak, beating their dog boxcar in an hour and one minute, and he got best to show. So Brot sent him out here to Vince to condition and handle him. He went into a dog named uh, Boozer. Boozer was reportedly a two-time winner, and I think he was at Bolio... Heinzel Cross, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, he just took Pirate's nose off, man. He literally took his nose where it was hanging to the side. And Pirate would make some game scratches with his chin on the ground and that nose to the side. And in almost two hours, Boozer won, you know. And Pirate was a rough, hard-biting chess dog, you know. And he got there a little bit early on and he never stopped trying but just that counter to him, he could just not get past it. And that's the problem. If you can't get past that hold, and if you don't fight the mouth or the bottom jaw yourself, because they'll take all your teeth out, you know, then you're at a disadvantage. They'll control you, they'll wreck you, and then they'll finish you. And that's one thing about a lot of the bolio dogs or even the, the freebie dog, you know, that Mr. Gray talked about and uh, Satan, that kind of stuff. Same thing, they have great finish. And several of those dogs went there, you know. The uh, uh, head dog he had was a, a four-time winner, and that's where he would get you. On that muzzle, right below the eyes, and push forward, go in. And what happens is when they do that and they get you down, they're going to go in for the finish. A lot of times it's in the kidneys, you know. Sometimes it's in the chest brisket, whatever, it'll break shit up, and then it doesn't take too long to finish you, because you have no defense, because all this is taken away from you, so for me, those were what I would consider game changers, as far as the style goes, you see that style in a lot of those dogs, but other bloodlines, or dogs that I've seen, or were familiar with, had that same style, for example, what you might call Finley's bow dog, from the Soso -so boys, you know, they come back. I saw several of those dogs, you know, a little 30-pound bitch Tito had. There was Grand Champion Fritz. I saw another little female that beat a two-time winner. Uh, I forget her name, 
they were in the low 30s. Uh, there was, uh, uh, what was that other one? Ruby, right? She beat T.L. Williams. She was some of that stuff. She won in two hours and 37 minutes. They had that same ability. And it kind of reminded me of the Bolio dogs in that their front end, it kind of comes down straight, you know, their front legs. They don't come close together like some dogs do. They're not far apart. They're almost straight down from their shoulders, you know. You have that angle coming off their shoulders to the elbow. And the elbow, the legs go down and they go almost straight. And I, in my opinion, that's what gives them their great balance. And those dogs had a lot of speed, a lot of balance, a lot of mobility, good wrestling ability. They would fight smart. They would fight the head and ears, muzzle like that, and then go rough when they had to, you know. And uh, those those dogs reminded me of that style. I had a friend in Wisconsin who actually took the Chinaman stuff, crossed it with the Aussie Stevens blood, and he got face dog. And he continued with those, you know, very effective holds. And, you know, where does that come from, right? Well, you could say, uh, I don't I don't know if he had the, the Frisco stuff, but if you say it has Frisco stuff in it, then it has the Bolio stuff in there through Homer. But uh, ultimately, you could say that it's from the Ozzy Seaman stuff too, because if you read the reports on Homer and Freddy and Mountain Boy, three brothers from that litter homer literally he would go to the muzzle then go to the stifle his brother freddie uh was a expert ear dog they called him you know their brother mountain boy was a face dog tim gibson can tell you about him you know he'd rip a dog's face off smash it or whatever right so, in my opinion, that's where that came from. And for my buddy, at least, it was very effective. He had several champions and lots of winners from those type of breedings. The Chinaman to the Aussie Stevens stuff, you know. Uh, then you have, uh, you know, uh, a dog named Clarence uh, that was bred by TVK. And, it, uh, and he ended up with being with the OTK. Right, he was Boudreaux skull crossed with the red boy, Jocko blood. He was that way too, fight the head, this and that, smart muzzle and all that, and then go to the stifle. And I saw several of his offsprings. Some of them would just strictly fight rough, and they were good at it. Some of them came out like him, like Dirty Dog, a dog named Dirty who got best in show in about thirty minutes. I saw him on a six match card in Baja years ago. And that's the way he fought. He would fight smart, fight the head, muzzle, all that, and then go to the stifle, or go to the shoulders, you know. Very effective hold. And like I said, the Soga bitch down, in, and uh, other ones down there in Mexico did that too. And the Santander dogs, you know. And I think it's just real effective for them to do that. If you have a dog like that, very hard to beat in the past. You know, even those uh, dogs down from Hammer, you know, Mason's Champion Hammer. Uh, hard to beat if they had that style. Not all of them have it, and not all bolio dogs do that. You know, I've seen some inbred ones that fought rough. They wouldn't fight the head. I've seen some other ones, line bred. A bitch, I forgot her name. She was rough. Looked like a Jeep or an Eli dog. You know, she didn't fight the head. So it's not in all of them to do that, but I just think the ones that do do that, very effective holds, you know. And, uh, uh, again, you know, uh, that's the dog, Bakary's Rick Rude, you know, hard-biting dog that way, just terrible, terrible dog. He got best in show in the one win that, that Bakary had with him, and he was sent back and produced other good dogs. You know, you have the Invicto Blood later on, and all these different ones. There's so many Bolio dogs because they, you know, proved to be uh, very potent. And very athletic. And you have a lot of wins. Grand champions and champions. Dozens of them, you know. Uh, that that they kind of jumped on the scene. And uh, started taking over. And of course the Soros Bull stuff too. One of the gamest dogs I've seen. Who took it to the end. 
was a Stroll's dog, and he had that style smart. He lost. He lost game in hour 35 to uh, uh, the Oregon dog that uh, Vinny conditioned and handled. But he was smart and fast. He just had too much dog on him, but he was a, a very good dog nonetheless and very game. Had that Sorrel stuff in him. And of course, there's, like I said, there's all kinds of, if you want to call it Zeke Black Widow or Bolio or whatever it is, with different crosses. They even used it with the white blood. You know, you see the handicapped dog bred to the white dog to produce grand champion snaps. And you see uh, Bobby Jr. bred to, you know, the ready dog from Moyles produce uh, Mavis and uh, and uh, uh, grand champion Queen of Hearts and uh, that stuff. You know, you see the Bolio cross with Klaus and you see the stuff in Mexico. Zeke Black Widow stuff crossed with the Eli and the uh, uh, Stu Fowler Red Lady stuff. Uh, it's crossed with the Booger stuff, you know. So you have all these different stuff that it goes with, you know, that uh, when those traits like that come out, it could be any number of combinations. But that those traits like that become dominant and sometimes it's just dominant in a particular dog or dominant in a family of dogs. And uh, they become very effective. And they're different from what most people are used to. Uh, that's what people like about them. They love to do what they're doing. They're good at it. They're very game. Those crawling, falling down, dead game animals that you hear people talk about. There's several of them from that that. Zebo Black or uh, Zeke Black Widow stuff, you know. <clears throat> so, uh, and also, you know, Goras, who was Andy Cap's brother, uh, was down in Mexico. They used him, incorporated him in that blood. And then you have the bully son Mendocino cross. Uh, Mendocino is a sister to Goras and Bolio. So you have that in there, in them too, you know. Uh, not all of them, like I said, find, fight that way, but they, they have a way of adding other attributes like speed. They're very fast. The shaking ability, five, six, seven times, you know. Intelligence, some of them will go to the throat, you know. And uh, just uh, different than what some people are used to seeing or were used to seeing at the time, you know. And even generations later, those traits will come out. Top dogs, you know, champions and best in show winners getting beaten by that style coming down from those particular dogs whichever they are whether they're here in mexico in the southwest california up in oregon wherever they're from you see that style can dominate the opponent and i guess that's what the game changer is for me or was for me was that particular style to fight smart like that to be fast like that, to have a lot of gameness like that, and have great air. They, it's nothing for them to go an hour, hour and a half, two hours, three hours, four hours. In fact, back in the day, uh, the record for males and females were held by dogs that had bolio stuff in it. You know, the little four hour and 24 hour bitch, little bolio dog, or at least had bolio in her. The little male, same thing, who went 5 hours and 27 minutes or whatever it was. 5 hours and 33 minutes or something. The little dogs, small dogs, they, they had, I forgot their names, but uh, if you look in the journal, at the time, those were the records held by a male and female. They both had the Bolio stuff in them. So going the distance is their forte, you know. Uh, like I said, it crossed with the white blood, crossed with the Heinzel blood, crossed with the OFRN blood. Cross with the Jeep blood and cross with boomerang blood and cross, uh, you know, the crosses Boyles did with it. You know, whether it's the Grand Champion Hank or the Eli stuff, Euler and Cherokee Chief and Bumper and all that. You see an influence of Bolio in there or those type of dogs. And like I said, early on it was Bolio, Corvino, Eli, right? And, uh, uh, you also see it in the, uh, what do they call it, the RBJBT, Red Boy, Jocko, Bolio, Tombstone stuff, you know, the Mayday, 
uh, with the buck stuff in it. You know, if you look at May Day, uh, back in his pedigree, he has that Bolio, Corvino, Eli blood in him. And then uh, more up front, you have the Red Boy Jocko stuff. It was mentioned Jocko heavy in the in the uh, uh, Dibo blood, you know, just like the Deffenbach and Sophiakis, you know, some of those dogs even in Mexico have that stuff behind them or in the Southwest, you know, uh, the uh, Tonko dogs have crossed with that stuff, you know, with Champion Spade, Ronnie Anderson has the, the Mayfield stuff in it, however you want to look at it, you know, whatever it's coming down from has that, you know, alligator stuff or the other Mayfield stuff in it, you know. Uh, I don't like to say the N-word, so you guys know which dog, dogs I'm talking about. But uh, you see that, in, and then putting the Grand Champion Buck in there, you know, SDP's Grand Champion Buck in there with the May Day, that's where you get the Macho Buck, and this Buck, and that Buck, and all that, with, uh, you know, it has that that same commonality. And in fact, it has all of them. It has the Red Boy Jocko in it. it has the... Uh, Tombstone Red Baby in it, has the Bolio Corbino Eli in it, you know, and, uh, you know, very effective. Some people, granted, I'll say they don't like that style, but a lot of times they don't like it because you get, when you start inbreeding too much with the Bolio stuff or any blood, you know, or you're not using the right individuals, they're boring. They don't have that style. They don't have that work ethic. They don't have that speed. They are just defensive fighters. Or they are just looking to stay out of trouble. You know, a lot of people in the past used to think, oh, them head dogs ain't game, you know. They're not game because they're they're looking to stay out of trouble. They don't like getting bit, all these cliches and all these things. And in some cases, that's true, right? But like I mentioned, some of those dogs were the gamest that you ever want to see. That dead gameness that people talk about that's a, so rare that you only see it every once in a while. That's the type of dogs they were. Or that deep gameness falling down, getting up and scratching, crawling to scratch, pushing their self on their back legs and chin and rolling over and all that. Those dogs were known to do that. A lot of them. Not all of them. So when you see somebody that don't like it, they either don't like that style or they didn't see the right ones. And that can happen. Or you see ones that get into the the mode of being too defensive and too uh, not wanting to get bit or, or or avoiding trouble, you know. Those ain't the ones I'm talking about. These ones like to fight. They like the action. They were in there. They were controlling it, controlling their opponent, doing their damage, you know. Even uh, the dog I had, Clayton Blood, who I mentioned before, he was like that. He was a head dog. He'd get on the head, the ears, the muzzle, jaw, all that, in the mouth, all that. And he didn't have a lot of mouth, but he had all that gameness and speed, that deep, deep gameness and speed and intelligence. And if he got a dog down, he would go into the throat, too, to try and finish him. Right? So maybe that came from the Finley's bow stuff. I don't even know if the Soso boy stuff is that came from the Finley's bow side. i just using that because a lot of them were heavy Finley's bow dogs. And even though my own Clayton Blood was mostly jeep he did have him uh, finley's bow in him so whether it came from that or it's just something that came out in him that's in the background somewhere he just he just was that was his genetic makeup to be that way he was one of those kind of fast speedy game hard fighting uh soft mouth <laughs> head dogs like that so it's prevalent in in uh, a lot of dogs, but again, uh, in the past, the people that recognized it and wanted to keep it going, they followed the dogs that had those traits that were able to throw those same traits up here, doing damage and all that, and keep that going in their line. So for me, that's what made them a game changer. It was the blood, whether it's Zeke Black Widow or or, or Dibo Black Widow, or Spike Black Widow mixed with the Zeke, and the, and all these other bloods, <coughs> <coughs> or whether it was the Soso Boy stuff, or like my buddy had was the Chinaman Ozzy Stevens stuff, or other people might have had Ozzy Stevens stuff that did that, you know. 
I think that uh, made a difference in the game starting in the late 70s moving forward. And like I said, there, there's, them dogs were in a lot of different areas, you know. And you just have to go back and research and see how many of them were. And when I say dozens of champions and several grand champions, they're all in there for you to research. So I hope you like the video. Let me know what your opinion, you know, what your opinion is. Put it in the comments. Uh, <clears throat> and then I'll make sure and answer, you know, maybe you have experience with that stuff or maybe you disagree. Whatever it is, post it up and we'll talk about it. Thank you.